Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode we're talking about ionic bonding and ionic compounds. This is AQA specification 1.3 and is on paper 1 and 2 of your final exams. If you're finding that my videos are helpful, why not click on the subscribe so you can get all of my latest content. An ionic bond then is defined as a strong electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. So if we look at the ionic bonds performed between sodium and chlorine, sodium will lose one electron and chlorine will gain one electron. This will change their electron configurations forming a positive ion on the sodium and a negative ion on the chlorine. These are oppositely charged ions and they will form strong electrostatic attractions. It's important that when we're describing this process in an exam, we're specific about the numbers of electrons being lost and being gained by each atom. It's really important that we know the charges on different ions. Most elements are easy with their charge being linked to their groups on the periodic table. This is because when they form ions, they adopt an electron configuration of the closest noble gas by either losing electrons, as is the case for metals in groups one, two, and three, or gaining electrons like the non-metals in groups five, six, and seven. There are some ions that don't go to their nearest noble gas, and these can be tricky to learn. Here's a good set to start with, and they should cover you for most exam questions. There are also ions which are made up of groups of atoms. These are called polyatomic ions or molecular ions. Here are eight of the most common ones that you'll need for your exams, but you're probably already familiar with a few. Ionic compounds don't have a charge, so the correct ionic formula combines the correct number of positive ions and negative ions to cancel the charges. There's a simple way to work out the correct ionic formula once you have the charge of the ions. So we'll look at aluminium and oxygen. Now aluminium is in group three, so has a three plus charge, and oxygen is in group five, so has a two minus charge. The formula will obviously contain aluminium and oxygen. So we can do the crossover method to find out how many atoms of each is going to be required. We take the number of charges on the oxygen and cross it over to be the number of the aluminium atoms. And then we take the number of charges on the aluminium and cross that over to be the number of oxygen atoms. In a slightly different example, we're going to look at the polyatomic or molecular ions of hydroxide forming an ionic bond with magnesium. Magnesium has a two plus charge and hydroxide has a minus one charge. We know the final formula will have both Mg and OH in it. We can do the crossover method to find out how many of each is going to be. We take the one minus from the hydroxide and give one magnesium. And then we take the two from the magnesium and give to two hydroxide ions. Now, because there's more than one atom in the hydroxide ion, we're going to put brackets around it. And then, as there's only one magnesium atom present in the final formula, we're going to get rid of that number one to give us a final formula of MgOH2. Ionic compounds form what we call a giant ionic lattice. Lattice means a regular structure, and a giant means that the same structure is repeating over and over and over. Giant ionic lattices have certain properties. Firstly, they can conduct electricity when they are dissolved in a solution or in a molten liquid. This is because the ions are free to move around and carry the charge. They also have a high melting point, this is because oppositely charged ions attract to each other strongly. Many ionic compounds are also soluble and they'll dissolve in polar solvents such as water. The strength of an ionic bond depends on the charges on the ions and the size of the ions. With the charges on the ions, we'll compare sodium chloride and magnesium oxide. Now sodium is a one plus charge and chlorine is a one minus charge, whilst magnesium is a two plus charge and oxygen is a two minus charge. The ionic bond between sodium chloride is weaker than the ionic bond between magnesium oxide. This is because magnesium oxide has a greater charge on magnesium and on oxygen. So as the charge goes up, the strength of the ionic bond goes up. Looking at the size of the ion then, this will have an impact on the distance between the ions and the length of the ionic bond. So we'll compare sodium chloride with potassium bromide. Now potassium is bigger than sodium and bromine is bigger than chlorine and the bonding is stronger in sodium chloride than it is in potassium bromide. This is because the distance between the ions is greater in potassium bromide. So as the size of the ion increases, the strength of the ionic bond decreases. So to summarize ionic bonding then, an ionic bond is a strong electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions. Ions are formed when electrons are lost or gained. You need to learn the common charges for different ions. Giant ionic lattices are regular repeating units. 
They can conduct electricity when they are liquid, they have a high melting point, and most of them are soluble. And the strength of an ionic bond depends on the charge and the size of the ions. Thanks chemists for watching this episode of Bale's Chemistry. For more bonding videos, click up here. And to subscribe, click down here.